What's up everybody, Tom Pelissero here at Candlestick Park. A late night, 17-6 uh, loss for the Vikings to the San Francisco 49ers. But some positive signs as well as some disturbing signs within that game. On the positive side, I think you saw a little bit of the growth the coaches have been seeing in Christian Ponder. Granted against a uh, 49ers defense that didn't play some of their starters. Uh, and also a defense that surely had not done a whole lot of game planning. Weren't going to show what they were really going to do against Ponder and the Vikings when they meet in week three of the regular season. But... Even though Ponder's 4 for 9 passing, three of those passes that uh, were incomplete were drops. Two of the others were throwaways. You saw Ponder having that mental clock going, knowing when he needed to get the ball out, using his feet when he needed to, not just when he could. The protection unit and the fact that you see already what Matt Khalil is going to be able to do and the fact that they're going to be able to go to protections that they couldn't even run last season, get more guys out in pattern. Ponder repeatedly going to his second and third reads tonight. Hits a big play to Stephen Burton. Early on, Burton getting the start in place of Percy Harvin. Consider that, too. The Vikings moving the ball today on a couple of drives. I think 119 yards over those first two drives for the starters without Percy Harvin in the lineup, without Adrian Peterson in the lineup either. I think you saw some positive signs on that front. I think you saw some growth in Christian Ponder. It's just one quarter of one exhibition game. And you don't want to go too far. But these are the sorts of things the coaches have been seeing with Ponder in terms of having that awareness in terms of when, when, knowing when to break the pocket, knowing when to give up on the play, knowing when you just got to throw the ball into the stands or at a guy's feet. Ponder showed some of those positive signs today. Toby Gerhardt ran the ball well today. And the offensive line, for the first time, that group working together in a game situation, held up very well. On the defensive side of the ball, not so good. When you give up almost 200 rushing yards in the first half of any game, I don't care if you're game planning or not, that's a problem. When you guys have guys who are not executing the fundamentals of the game, guys getting out of their gaps, guys making poor attempts to make tackles, as Mr. L. Raymond did at one point, that's all the stuff that Allen Williams really wanted to clean up in this game. I wouldn't be surprised at all if when we get back down there to Mankato on Sunday, you see some changes uh, to the depth chart. I think you could see Harrison Smith being in the lineup and getting some more time because they just don't know that they trust as much as they like Mr. O. Raymond in coverage. Maybe he's somebody you use more on a package basis because Harrison Smith is able to come down, be a little bit more disciplined, a little bit more physical in run support. That wouldn't surprise me. They're also going to have a new starting nose tackle because Latroy Guyon's going to be out for a week or two. They certainly still look at Guyon as being the starter going into the regular season, but Fred Evans did some positive things tonight. He'll be that guy. Trevor Guyton, the seventh-round pick, he's going to get some more time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how things continue to evolve over this next week because you saw some of those same old problems on the defense tonight. It starts with the run defense. If you're constantly letting opponents be in second and five, second and four, they're going to be in a uh, favorable situation to throw the ball on second and third down. The 49ers uh, quarterbacks completed 20 of 29 passes today. They do get one intercession by Solomon Elimimian. Elimimian, excuse me, I was corrected on that. That's how you pronounce it. And that's off a deflected ball. The 49ers did whatever they wanted to, over 400 yards of offense. They could have scored more points. They hadn't taken a knee at the one-yard line there. A lot to clean up on the defensive side. Positive things on offense and also positive things on special teams. Once again, you have Blair Walsh coming out. He was banging 60-yard field goals in warm-ups before this game comes out. First attempt, 39 yards on a night where the wind is whipping up pretty good. He hits that one. He hits another one later. Has one touchback, puts the other two in the end zone. Maybe you've taken some strides forward in that regard. We'll get a lot better ideas as we go into week two and week three of the preseason. And, of course, the key date, now less than one month away, September 9th, against the Jackson, ja Jacksonville Jaguars. And of course, it'll be interesting to watch how this entire thing continues to evolve through that process. I'm Tom Pellicero. I really need to get back to the hotel. I'm just starting to spin in my words here. Full Vikings coverage at 1500ESPN.com. We'll see you.